And thanks for having us in. Many of South Dakota's top political leaders are in the state for this Veterans Day, including Governor Kristi Noem. Since the election, the governor has made multiple national appearances in support of President-elect Donald Trump. In one of those interviews, News Nation's Elizabeth Vargas asked Noem if she thinks Trump will prosecute political opponents, as he's mentioned in the past. So to be clear, you do not expect him to pursue any sorts of political persecutions? I do not. I do not expect him to do that at all, and that's not any indication that he would do. If, if there is any persecutions or not persecutions, I guess prosecutions maybe, for uh, it would be because there has been a law broken, something that has happened that is not acceptable under our state and our federal government, uh, bring that kind of justice back into the system. This afternoon, Noam is scheduled to attend a bridge dedication in Beersford, South Dakota. It's one of the governor's first known public event in South Dakota since the election. We're going to have a news crew there, and we'll let you know what she has to say tonight on Kelloland News. Turning now to weather, pretty comfortable out there, Adam. It's what we might expect as we are not far from halfway through November. Yeah, uh, we're knocking on the door of the halfway point for uh, November, which comes around, if I'm doing my math correctly, on Friday. That's when we hit to the 15th, but it's not going to feel like it really outside of today. Veterans Day is shaping up to be quite nice so far in Sioux Falls. Some high-level clouds, but that's it as we take a look at Falls Park. 44 uh, north wind at 8 miles per hour. Believe it or not, this is right about where we should be for this time of year. Average is in the mid to upper 40s for high temperatures, but we've been spoiled as of late. Meanwhile, out west, there's Deadwood on this Veterans Day Monday. Nice weather out in the Black Hills as well. A few bits of cloud cover now and again, but overall it's more sunshine than cloud cover across much of the region. We're at 37, though, in Ortonville as well as Aberdeen, 38 Watertown, 39 in Pierre, as well as Rapid City, Chamberlain, Valentine, and Pine Ridge. Up to 43 now in Custer and 44 over the border in Iowa towards Spencer. But regardless of where you are, it is noticeably chillier now compared to the same point yesterday. And outside of a few locations from Sioux Falls to Worthington and Spencer, it is a double digit difference. Even upward of 20 degrees cooler out toward areas like Faith, Buffalo, Rapid City and Spearfish. But we're going to go right back the other way as we head into Tuesday and really for the majority of this work and school week on the way. Uh, we do have a few little isolated showers straddling along the I-90 corridor uh, through Lyman County, headed over toward Chamberlain as well. And that's really it. It's the only, I guess you could call, hiccup to an otherwise pretty nice day out there. Uh, temperatures peak in the 40s, especially if you are in southeastern or northeastern Kelowland for that matter, with a good amount of sunshine and not too much of a breeze for that matter. To the west, it's a bit of a different story, but not necessarily for a bad reason. We're going to be talking about 50s and a little more of a breeze as well coming out of the southeast. It's going to try and warm you guys up a little bit more. That's going to set the stage for what we see on Tuesday and through the rest of the week as average temperatures by day and and for that matter, by night, are going to be pretty hard to come by. We'll talk about that. Go through the rest of your forecast coming up. Thank you, Adam. Remedy Brewing Company in downtown Sioux Falls is marking No Shave November with a pair of fundraising events. Beards for box lunches will include a beard and mustache competition and pickleball tournament with all proceeds supporting the Sioux Falls School District lunch program. It's actually kind of sad, you know, how many kids, you know, either don't go with anything or that their lunch is the most nutritious meal of their whole entire day, you know, and we want to be able to be a uh, part of that that can help provide that to the community here in town. The Beards for Box Lunches fundraiser is Saturday, November 30th. The Beard Competition and Pickleball Tournament each begin at 4 p.m. And registration is now open. We're going to tell you about some of the creative facial hair categories tonight on Kelloland News. Fire crews on both of the U.S. coasts are battling wildfires, including one in New York and New Jersey that killed a Parks employee. In Southern California, crews northwest of Los Angeles made progress yesterday against a fire that prompted thousands of residents to flee and destroyed more than 130 structures. New York authorities say they're investigating the death of an 18-year-old State Parks employee who was helping to fight the fire when a tree fell on him Saturday. The firefighting effort has postponed Veterans Day plans in one New Jersey town.
Congressional Republicans are gearing up for the return of Donald Trump to the White House and laying out their strategy to allow the president-elect to implement his agenda as soon as possible following inauguration. Washington correspondent Trevor Shirley is in D.C. with this report. This week, Senate Republicans will choose their new Senate Majority Leader. It's a process the president-elect is already involving himself in. Republicans say because President-elect Donald Trump won the popular vote as well, their party has a mandate to implement his agenda as soon as they can. The Senate also wants to work very quickly, actually before the inauguration, when making sure the president's cabinet is in place. Once Senate Republicans elect a new Senate Majority Leader this week, they'll begin the process of confirming the president-elect's cabinet picks. We're going to have hearings and votes so that on day one, January 20th, when the president takes over, he's going to have as much of the cabinet in place as we can get. Over the weekend, the president-elect announced former acting ICE director Tom Homan will serve as border czar, overseeing planned deportations. The president-elect also plans to nominate Congresswoman Elise Stefanik as U.N. ambassador. Let's give this new team an opportunity to get their feet on the ground and to actually make some nominations. Lots of questions, but at the same time, uh, there's always that opportunity for them to make some really, really good choices among some really qualified candidates for a number of those different top uh, ca or cabinet positions. President-elect Trump also making clear this weekend who will not serve on his team, including former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. We've also learned that President-elect Trump plans to appoint Stephen Miller, an immigration hardliner, as his deputy chief of staff for policy. Reporting in Washington, I'm Trevor Shirley, WGN News.